Hi guys, welcome to my channel Lush Foliage. I hope you guys are fine and are safe. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about a very beautiful flowering plant called as the Crossandra. I'll put the botanical name on the screen. Now it's also called as the firecracker flower. Now this plant is native to Asia. To be more precise, uh, it is native to Sri Lanka and the southern part of India. Now here in South India, this uh, flower is considered to be very auspicious and it is used for a lot of religious purposes. Uh, there are a lot of garlands that are made out of this flower in order to offer it in the temples. It's also used in uh, weddings and in marriage ceremonies as well because this uh, flower is supposed to be very uh, auspicious. Now this, uh, the best part about this uh, flowering plant is that it can be grown as an annual plant as well as a perennial plant. But this completely depends uh, where you live. Uh, because if you are from an environment like mine, which is a little bit warm, then this plant can be grown as a perennial and it tends to uh, flower mostly throughout the year. But in majority of the parts uh, of the world, they tend to flower mostly during spring and uh, summer and at times during winter. So luckily in my city, they tend to bloom throughout the year. Uh, so right now in November also, it is starting to bloom and it's putting out a lot of blooms. Now, unfortunately, because of the rains, uh, my flowering plant did get damaged. Uh, it was putting out a lot of flowers, but you can see uh, all the flowers are damaged and that's because of uh, the rain. The rainwater happened to fall on them and all of the leaves happened to get uh, damaged. They tend to put out a stalk and then um, inside those brackets, there are a lot of flowers. Ideally, the bracket is not visible. In my uh, video, as you can see, the bracket is very visible because uh, the water droplets fell on the flowers and it damaged the flowers. So this is how it tends to look like. Usually, the bracket is not visible. It is completely filled with flowers. Now, guys, talking about the soil mix, uh, they prefer a loose soil mix, which is well draining, but it has to maintain slight amount of moisture. As always, I tend to use the same soil mix, what I use for all of my plants, which is a mix of coco peat, garden soil, sand, and a little bit of perlite. Perlite is just to make the soil airy. Sand is to make the soil well draining. Coco peat tends to retain moisture because these plants, uh, they love slight moisture in the soil. Because these are uh, tropical plants, they like uh, high humidity as well as uh, they tend to like slight moisture in the soil. So ensure that you do not let the soil dry out for a longer period of time. Otherwise, the plant will start to dry. It will damage the plant. So you have to be extremely careful. Now, they prefer a slightly acidic soil, wherein if their pH uh, of the soil should be between 5.8 to 6.5. So they prefer a slightly acidic soil. So if you are a person who tends to use a lot of compost or if you tend to use a little bit of fertilizers, it is going to work out really well. Uh, you can even use a little bit of uh, citrus peels like uh, the orange or the lemon peels. Uh, you can completely dehydrate them and then you can add them in the soil because just like our rose plants, they also like slightly acidic soil. Now, guys, remember about watering. Uh, you have to ensure that you water it uh, very well during the summers, uh, during the spring, which is their growing period. But during winters, you'll have to cut down on the watering. But again, when we say cut down on the watering, that doesn't mean that you are going to not water the plant at all. You have to still water it, but probably you'll have to cut down the watering a little bit. Like if during summers, if you're watering it every two or three days in winters, probably you can water it once in five days or once a week, depending upon your environment and climate. Now, talking about temperature and humidity, they prefer a temperature that is once again the same between 15 degrees Celsius up to 30 to 33 degrees Celsius is something that they would uh, love to grow in but the most important thing is that uh, they prefer a good amount of humidity so if you are a person who tends to live in an environment that is very arid that is very dry then you'll have to figure out a way to increase the amount of humidity now either you'll have to buy a humidifier or you can even go with the pebble tray method uh, wherein uh, you just take a tray of pebbles and you fill that up with water as long as the water is not touching the bottom of the pot uh, the reason why I'm talking about humidifier is because this plant can be grown indoor as well. Uh, unlike other flowering plants which require a lot of sunlight, they need to be grown outdoor. Whereas this plant is a plant that can be grown indoor as well as long as it is kept in a spot where it gets a good amount of indirect bright light. Even outdoor, it's not necessary that you have to give it full sun. You can either give it full morning sun or you can even keep it in indirect bright light or in partial shade. 
uh, the plant will still flower that is the best thing about this plant because a lot of flowering plants need a good amount of direct sunlight only then they tend to flower but it's not the case with this plant it can even grow in indirect or partial shade it will still continue to flower that's the best part about this plant now another important thing uh, this plant does get affected with uh, mealybugs uh, so you have to do a constant check uh, as I said, the bracket of this plant, it tends to get affected with aphids as well. So it's always better to do a routine check once every two weeks or once every three weeks. If you happen to see any pest, you can go with any organic solution and uh, treat your plant. Uh, fertilizers, as I said, uh, this plant uh, tends to bloom more during the summer. So at that point of time, you can go ahead and put in uh, some fertilizers or liquid based fertilizer or solid fertilizer, whichever you have been using and have been getting good results. You can use that or you can use seaweed solution that is also that will also tend to work out really well. And during winters, it completely depends upon your environment. If your plant is still flowering, you can add a very weak strength of fertilizer but do not overdo it because otherwise that will damage the plant. But during summers, you can add or you can give a good amount of fertilizers. Now guys, this plant is not frost hardy, meaning if you are from a place wherein the temperatures drop uh, very low, uh, then the leaves of this plant will get damaged because they are more uh, of a warm uh, environment growing plant. So they do not like uh, very cold temperatures. Now talking about propagation, uh, it is very simple to propagate uh, this plant. Uh, they can readily root from cuttings. So basically you can take cuttings and uh, put it in another pot or in another part of the garden. Uh, it will start to root. Apart from that, you can even grow it from seeds and it is very easy to grow with seeds. Uh, within a couple of uh, weeks uh, of uh, the plant growing, it starts uh, putting out flowers, which is a very good thing. Now pruning is only applicable to uh, people who tend to grow this as a perennial plant. Uh, for people who are from a very warmer environment, uh, they can grow this plant as a perennial plant. So pruning will help in uh, putting out more bushy growth. Uh, ideally, this plant can get very leggy over the period of time as it starts to mature. So if you're going to do a pruning, uh, it is going to keep the plant tidy and it's going to keep the plant compact and bushy. Otherwise, this flowering plant has a tendency to become uh, stretched or become leggy or become very tall. So if you are not a person who likes very tall flowering plants, then you can always uh, prune them and uh, make them shorter. But this has to be done uh, in their active growing period, which is the summer or spring. So early spring or early summer, you can start pruning your plant to make it even more bushy and compact. So guys, that's all about it. I hope that this video was helpful to you. If it was, please hit the like button. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing to it. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep planting.